gentlemen, and thank you for showing up this evening for our plaque dedication on our boulder. Um, you'll have to excuse us. We're not quite as prepared as we should have been, so my apologies. Um, but with that thought process in mind, I'd like to introduce QH, our local gym teacher that all the girls know and love. And she has been invited to open our ceremonies this evening with a prayer. Lord, we just thank you for this day, God, this day that they're making history, Lord, this Girl Scout troop is. Father, we just we just pray, Lord, that you bless them for the effort that they have put forth, that uh, they have worked hard and diligently, Lord Jesus, to um, just um, create something that the community can enjoy and they, they can enjoy as well. So, Father, we just pray that you uh, just bless them as they continue to do awesome things in the community, Lord, and that this day is... Uh, just sealed in their heart. We ask it in your name. Amen. Okay, there's no more consonant professional or um, expert on the William Polk and all of his things than Shirley Willard. So we're going to ask her to give you the history about our trading post. Thank you. This spot of land is the most historic in Fulton County. Why? Because this was the site of the first white settler's house well, actually, the first white settler's house was north here, about a mile, where AirVac is now. But this was the site of the first trading post and the first post office. And the post office was just a row of wooden boxes inside the trading post with uh, letters of the alphabet placed. And then they would uh, put the uh, mail in uh, the box like, you know, W would be for Willard and uh, B for Boardman and so on. Well, that post office was called Chippeway, and it was spelled C-H-I-P-P-E-W-A-Y. Not Chippewa, but Chippeway. William Polk came here in 1830 to survey the Michigan Road. The Michigan Road is from uh, Madison, Indiana, on the Ohio River to Lake Michigan, but it's not straight because it had to go around the Kankakee Swamp. This road was just a trail through the woods, stumps low enough for a wagon to go over. And if the wagon got stuck on the stumps, then you were stumped. And that's where that word comes from. The wagons got stumped. <laughs> there are many, many stories about William Polk. He lived an exceptionally exciting life. I learn new history about him every year. For instance, a descendant of his told me that he was wounded at the Battle of Tippecanoe. And years later, an Indian came up to him and said, you owe me $20. And Polk said, well, why do I owe you $20? And he said, because I didn't kill you at the Battle of Tippecanoe. Oh, my. <laughs> That's quite a story, isn't it? I had never heard that before till they told me that. Well, in 1838, the Pottawatomie campfire stretched from here at the river to Polk's house, the White House, which was uh, a mile north, where Airvac is. The muster roll lists 859 Indians, so that meant there were at least 170 campfires. Because I figured, okay, if there were five people around each campfire... And maybe there were fewer, so maybe they had 200 campfires. But it was a mile long. Can you imagine all those campfires? Uh, there was a Mayan Indian who got caught up with them when they sent out the scouts to uh, gather up the Potawatomi. And uh, his name was Anthony Nigo. And he told General Tipton, um, he said, I'm not Potawatomi. Do I have to go? And General Tipton said, no. Uh, hide in the attic. And in the morning after we're gone, you can come out of the attic. So the attic must have been in this trading post because the William Polk House does not have an attic. We moved that William Polk House over to the historical site of grounds. And it doesn't have an attic. So it must have been the attic here in the uh, trading post. Well, he came out and he lived uh, in Fulton County around here the rest of his life. And the DAR, Daughters of American Revolution, at Kosciuszko County named their DAR uh, group. Uh, Anthony Nigo chapter. I think they've changed the name since then. But the treaty grounds uh, of 1836 was a mile east of here. And you notice on the, uh, the bigger boulder over here that the DAR place, that was the Manitow chapter DAR, placed that in 1925. It talks about treaty grounds a mile east of here. And that would be on the property that now has the Hindball Round Barn. The Hindball older folks who are gone now uh, told me that... Uh, their father passed on to them the story that um, there was a, a treaty tree there 
and that they had uh, caused it to grow with uh, one branch going parallel to the ground. It stuck out there about 20 feet. And when they were kids, they would run on that branch and jump off the end. Well, eventually that branch fell off. And uh, so that treaty tree, it's a big old sycamore tree, is still there in the woods there, close to the Hindball Round Barn. They think the actual treaty grounds was uh, close to the highway on 25. And um, the story that I was told, and I, well, I think I gathered this from reading too, is that when they had a treaty, they would send out 10 or 12 men with axes, and they would cut down trees and build, oh, five or six, maybe 10 log cabins and they were for the traders. So the traders would set up stores in there and the Indians could come and uh, uh, sign for anything they wanted. It's like credit, you know, you sign for it and you gotta pay for it later. But anyway, um, there were kettles and blankets and guns and all kinds of things for sale, ribbons and beads, uh, and they signed for them. So when they actually went to pay off after the treaty, then all the traders came in and said, hey, they owe me 10000 Another one said, they owe me 6000 And Another said, they owe me 50000 So they had a big fuss about it and <laughs> finally got it sorted out, I guess. But it turned out that the Indians didn't get much. But they had the goods. However, um, you know, it wasn't exactly what they needed at that time. So um, this DAR boulder was uh, hauled from Rex and Joanne Bowen's farm, too. And Reverend Clyde Walters, any of you remember him? In 1975, he was quite a bit older than I am, uh, in our Historical Society Quarterly number 20, he wrote that it took five horses to haul it here. His father was in on moving it, and they hitched three horses to it, and it wouldn't budge. So then they hitched two more horses and got it to moving, and pulled it over here from Bowen's farm, pulled it all the way over here. That's this big boulder uh, next to us. Well, I don't know how many horses are in the big machines that the Fulton County Highway has, but uh, they hauled this boulder over here. So, yeah, we thank the Fulton County Highway Department for that. So that brings us up to today, and I want to show you the Indiana Bicentennial Legacy Project letter and present it to the girls, and I also have a gift for them. So can you hold that while mm -hmm. I get that out here? There's a, there's what you're going to give me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I framed it so that I could give it to you. This is the letter from the uh, Indiana Bicentennial Commission uh, declaring this particular project, the William Polk Trading Post Historical Marker, as a Bicentennial Legacy Project, and it's, it's got the gold seal. See the gold seal on there? That makes it official. <laughs> yeah. So I want to present that to you, Ellen. Thank you. And then we have some gifts. Yeah. <laughs> Pull on each one. Hang them to that. Okay. Well, okay. I was not a Girl Scout. I had three sons, and so this is the way we always honored Boy Scouts. So I wanted to honor each of you girls the way that we learned in Boy Scouts. <laughs> so. Uh, each one of you, if you come up, I'll uh, put this around your neck. And <laughs> congratulate you. Go around the boulder. Go that way. Thank you. Give me them and I'll pull them apart and give you one. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> they kind of tend to get Here. the strings all tangled up. <laughs> These were made by Marsha Glassburn, who has Indian ancestry, and she's on our board of directors, too. Thank you. I mean, the historical side of the board of directors. Thanks, girls. We really appreciate this, and we wanted you to have a memento to keep forever to remember this day. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome, and I'm real proud of all of you. <laughs> One for Ellen. Your neck, Ellen. Is Tracy here? I got one for Tracy uh, too. She, she's getting the rest of our girls just to to their parents. So she should be there. Be here directly, and I will present that to her as soon as she shows up. Okay. So this is uh, my part. <laughs> okay, here you go. 
<laughs> Pass it back to you. Okay, so Shirley's already thanked a couple of our folks, but each one of the girls has somebody that they would like to thank as well. So if you would let the girls do their bit. We would like to give a special thanks to our Girl Scout leaders, Tracy Reisner and Ellen Boardman, the Fulton County Historical Society for fundraising, Shirley Willard at History Research and Applied for Indiana Bicentennial Legacy yeah, Project Recognition. Rex and Joanne Bowen for donating our folder. We'd also like to thank Fulton County Highway Department because they moved our boulder. We would like to thank Willie Pocock for creating the metal plaque. We would like to thank Zim Zimmerman Funeral Home and Henley Monuments who's done the metal plaques. And for the Senior Girl Scouts for working hard and making this happen. So nobody, not like none of us knew who William Polk was when we started working on this project. And so we had to read about him and we started, we kind of didn't work at the beginning of this. <laughs> like we would sit around and do nothing when we were supposed to be reading about him. But with the help of Shirley, we ended up being able to learn a lot about him. And it was a really fun experience to finally like be able to learn something that like helps the town. <laughs> when we were finding the boulder, we were offered help finding it. And when we went out during the winter to pick out our boulder, we marked it as our own and finally moved it up to its forever home recently. The plaque, thinking about what to put on the plaque was the hardest step because everything had to be in order and worded correctly. We finally made it through and now it probably stays here. And now we talked about this plaque and talked about this plaque and talked about this plaque, but now it's time for you to hear what the plaque actually says. William Polk Trading Post. William Polk was Fulton County's first white settler coming in 1830 to survey the Michigan Road. In 1831, he built a log cabin trading post on south bank of Tippecanoe River. He was postmaster of county's first post office called Chippeway East 1832 in this trading post. When he was seven years old, Polk was kidnapped by Indians in 17, 1782, adopted by an Indian family and learned the Indian language. He was in, inter, interpreted. interpreted between General William Henry Harrison and to, 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 to Katze at Vincennes. Vincent. Vincent. Vincent was um, in 1810 and was wounded in battle of the Tip Canoe in 1811. He was a member of the con convention that wrote the first Indiana, Indiana state constitution in 1816. Polk was the federal conductor on the forced removal of the Potawatomi Indians in 1838. They, they uh, camped here and a mile north along the Michigan Road. To his white house, a stagecoach inn, which he built in 1832. The house was moved to Fulton County Historical Society on um, U.S. 31 in 18, 1993. See his see historical marker at the Polk House for Polk's life story. See trail of death marker in front of Rochester Courthouse. This training posts, post marker e Erected 2016 by Girl Scout Troop 43611. Thank you very much. And in conclusion, we'd like to have QH come out and pray us out.
Lord, once again, we'd just like to thank you for this time um, on Troop 43611. Okay, and uh, we just pray, Lord, that you bless them. And Father, we just thank you that they were a part of this bicentennial celebration where we get to celebrate um, our, our state and that they just get to be, they're able to dedicate this uh, at this particular significant time. And Lord, we just pray that um, once again, that this area will be um, enjoyed generation, generation after generation as people come and enjoy um, the hard work that they have put forth to make this happen. So we just, again, ask for a blessing on them and that they would continue to serve their town and their city. Amen. Good job, ladies.